Welcome to Movies That Matter, the podcast about recent films going above and beyond the call of box office returns to boldly explore a social issue affecting people's lives. I'm Nicole Fanari, and with me today is... Lexi. Welcome back, Lexi. What movie are we overanalyzing this week? Brittany Runs a Marathon. Written and directed by Paul Downs Calizo, apparently based on his roommate, um, a hard partying woman receives a startling wake-up call when a visit to the doctor reveals how unhealthy she is. Motivated to lose weight, she soon takes up running to help her prepare for her ultimate goal, competing in the New York City Marathon. So, what did you think? I liked it overall. Okay. I thought... The main actress, Jillian, what's her last name? Jillian Bell. I thought Jillian Bell did a really good job. And she was very funny. I thought other people were very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think the pacing wise, overall, overall, I really liked it. The only thing I noticed, one of the things I noticed watching was it seemed to be sort of the upward trajectory seemed to be like, very smooth when she started, you know, training and, you know, it was definitely hard. Right. You can see that she was struggling in the beginning, but overall I would say the beginning was pretty smooth and then you get to the main climax and sort of initial downfall and it was like a really fall, really hard downfall. Yeah. So it was like very smooth, very far downfall, and then like it got better, you know, the typical... I third guess, act, yeah. The typical third act. Um that was one of the first things that struck me about the pacing. But, oh, yeah, overall, I, I liked a lot. Yeah, I would say um, I, overall I liked it. I was really engaged. Um, I want to get into a little bit more about the character of Brittany in a second. Um, this is a this is a tough character to play sometimes because when somebody is kind of a mess, but they still have to be interesting charming like there has to be enough good qualities there that you're actually rooting for them yeah and i thought you know in an in an in a higher budget movie that this that this part would have been given to rebel wilson i can see that and yeah. i just don't like rebel wilson like i just don't um and so i was thinking like had they given this part to rebel wilson i probably would not have liked this movie but i Mm. thought jillian bell conveyed enough positive qualities about britney that i was really on her side um i i was okay with the posting uh, with the posting i was okay with the pacing i would say the biggest issue for me like cinematically to the movie was the the marathon The filming of the marathon sequence just was like a totally (laughs) different movie. It was just like a huge tonal shift to the whole sequence of her running. There was, you know, use of, yeah, like a digital camera, you know, or showing like, or like news news footage like mixed in. So apparently they, oh, sorry. Yeah. Apparently they filmed it at the actual New York City marathon, which I thought was cool. Yeah. But it just like, it was like a huge, it was, you know. It didn't seamlessly blend in, I would say. Like, it looked like TV footage versus, like, film footage. Yeah, the weird use of the map, the weird use of the, like, colored background yeah, while I she guess... was running. Like, it just felt like a totally different movie than the one we had seen up until that point, and I didn't like it. Uh, I guess I, I can see what you're saying. I didn't notice it as much, and I maybe I was so engrossed in the movie that I sort of let it slip by and not was it didn't care as much about that it was different, but I, I didn't I didn't notice it as much okay. watching it. Yeah, it really bothered me. I mean, just I would say like the whole the whole color palette of this movie really bothered me. So there's like oh, everything was why? like because everything was like very sun drenched pastel. Like it was almost like you were in a Nancy Myers film. And then like as she was like farther along in her training and losing weight and the upswing, she would she would sh- she would she switched from her sort of Lisa Frank like bright colored kid like clothes to these very dark clothes with very severe lipstick and I was like okay getting healthy is not the same as becoming goth like I don't, like her whole her her whole, like the the makeup and the outfit transitions were weirdly jarring to me especially because everybody else just seemed to say 
in this, like I said, this very sun-drenched pastel um, world while she was sort of moving out of it. And it just, it looked strange to me. It was too big a contrast. I would have like, and, 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 and part of the issue then becomes because you have this very, I mean, every shot in the house was like so brightly lit, you know, mm-hmm. and color washed. And then when you got to the marathon scene and you switched to like TV footage and the on the ground camera, like it just seemed very jarring. Like, again, it was like a tonal shift and it didn't match what had come before. I thought that overall I did like it. I do think parts of it, especially towards the end, end with, her conversation with Demetrius. Ray. Yeah. Um, it partic- I thought parts of it and then sort of intertwined with that scene, it was it was very sort of, we have a simple, simple message in some ways. We're putting it, you know, out in the open. It was more tell versus showing, mm. I thought. Mm-hmm. Which was, it was fine. You know, I think... I do think in the second half of this, we'll have a lot to say on the intricacies of the message and body positivity. Right, right. But overall, I think it was sort of more of a simple movie with a possibly simple message. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I did like it. I found her really engaging. I really liked um, Jern, her, her, like the layabout friend to, to, to lover to, I guess, serious partner Mm -hmm. um i thought he was great i liked um their scenes together were really fun and i liked like i thought there was a good juxtaposition so she has this sort of like the frenemy the person who keeps her around just to make her roommate initial roommate yeah her feel better about her own life right yeah (laughs) um and she's she's very harsh and she's very cutting but i didn't find it unrealistic frankly i've had people like that no yeah i agree um, but there was a nice juxtaposition where as Brittany's starting to train for the marathon, she, her roommate's like, you know, I want to go out. I had a bad day. Like, I want to drink. And Brittany's like, you know, I can't. And the roommate is like really intent on sabotaging her. And when there's a scene when they're in the house with, with Jaren and he asks her to get high with him. And she's like, no, I have to like run tomorrow, get up early and run tomorrow. He's, he just is. He just, he immediately backs off and is like, oh, okay, I admire your discipline. And it was like a nice juxtaposition. Like that was a very show, not tell. Like it wasn't, it didn't hit you over the head of like the contrast between someone who's a good friend and supports her and someone who keeps her around just to make themselves feel better. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I kept going back and forth on my initial point about it being sort of simple because while I overall, in terms of the overarching parts of the film, I thought it was sort of trying to go for a simple message and sometimes was tell not show. Dif- various scenes like mm-hmm. that one felt very real and very believable and would have small details like um there's the scene where when they when she and Jern finally do get together and they start having sex, they actually show him like pulling out the condom, Mm -hmm. not directly putting it on, but that he is putting it on. And I was like, oh, I feel like that's a small detail that's not always included in these, you know, extravagant Hollywood sex scenes where it's all about like the passion. It's like, oh, this is a very real progression of events and also the very real sort of, I don't know if sacrifice is the right word, but when you do start sometimes trying to get healthier, there is this going against the group, especially... Mm -hmm when you have friends that want to go out and party that her, you know, the struggle of saying no and making those decisions felt very real. And I really loved that about the movie. Yeah, I agree. And I really love, you know, we've talked about this on other podcasts, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make too big a thing about this, but you know, there was a, so she, she sort of has to leave her old group of friends and then she comes into a new group of friends through her running group. um, Both of whom are older than her. One of whom is, married and with kids um one of whom and is male um one of whom is going through a very ugly divorce and is female and so the movie really shows you first of all everybody's got problems like yeah. i think the perspective of like whatever britney is going through britney is going through the movie takes it seriously but it also juxtaposes like you know, another character who's going through a really ugly divorce and has lost custody of her children you know you know, how big are Britney's, pro- you know, like, 
Yeah. yeah, it's her own. It's she is realizing how to handle her own problems, but also realizing that there's about the world outside of her and that how other people also have issues. Right. And I think, you know, it's, again, part of her learning how to be an adult is actually interacting with other adults. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like she needed older friends. Mm-hmm. Um, in some cases, you know, sort of like five to ten years older and some, and then more like ten, you know, to twenty years older. Um, it, it's, you know, I don't want to pinpoint anybody's age but you know she, yeah and so and in different stages of life and going in different family circumstances and different living circum- circumstances and the movie kind of brings home like how yeah just saying stuck with their same age cohort can be put blinders on as to like what you know what what else what other choices you have and what other paths you can take and i i really liked that about the friends that she ends up with yeah i really enjoyed their and also how the woman in the group is... I don't know if she's the, her their landlord or just the neighbor. Just the neighbor. Okay. She, she's the neighbor and Brittany is initially very resistant to her. And then as she learns more and they really develop her character, she starts to like her and they start to become friends, which I really like to see the progression of that friendship. I did too. And I thought, again, this was a tough thing to pull off. And Michaela Watkins, the actress who played Catherine, really nails it in terms of... Brittany is very harsh and pushes her away a lot. And you're like, why does this woman stick with it? Um, That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that, that can be hard. And I think, but I think the actress, she does a lot with like her facial expressions. And when, when Brittany does push her away, she has this very much like, I get it, compassionate look on her face. Like she's some stuff like, and I, I just thought, I mean, for me, who's, you know, at this point closer to her age than to Britney's age, like her sense of compassion of like, I've been through some stuff. I know what it's like. I can, I can be patient. Like, I don't have to take this personally. Like that, that, that mature, I guess maturity is really the word I'm looking for. Like she shows a compassion and a maturity that does come with age. And I thought she really pulled off the like, yeah, be however you want. Like, you can't insult me. Like, I don't care about your opinion. <laughs> like, I'm too mature for that. So I I thought there were some really nice moments between the two women. Um, Definitely. And also at the end when it sort of slightly reverses and, and when Catherine is, yeah, sort of more when she's, a, I think, officially lost custody of her kids, you know, Brittany comes to comfort her and the roles are reversed. reversed and I yeah. thought it was a good, yeah, like circle back to the beginning and showing that they've, you know, Brittany is also matured and they can now also flip roles and be slightly more equals. Yeah. Yeah. It shows her, you know, she really has grown up. She's not just a taker anymore on, yeah, on, definitely. This, on this friendship. Um, so quick note, loved the soundtrack. Found it very like... Oh yeah, that was fun. Pump me up when it needed to um, mm-hmm. and didn't play plonky music when I was supposed to feel sad, which I really hate. Um <laughs> And I guess, so from the narrative arc of the first, the, of the movie of, of, you know, she has, she's, she's training, she's losing weight, she's getting healthy, but she's not working on any of her emotional issues. And then she finds, then she gives herself a stress fracture and has to, ends up not actually completing, being able to race in the marathon. Um, That she initially attended to. Yeah. And her friends go on and do it without her. And she has like this setback and. I, I, I like, I really, that. I yeah. really felt like the, you know, just a simple story of her succeeding and, and like having her take such a hard fall, I thought was really, I think what saved this movie from just being a super generic kind of thing of age. Movie. Yeah. Cause I, no, and even though I mentioned the pacing earlier, I do think it needed a hard fall like that after being so much up and up and up and up because yeah. it would it would have been so boring. I mean, the characters were definitely engaging, but it would have been so boring if she hadn't had that fall. And it's nice that she did get to eventually run the marathon, but it wasn't the one that she initially intended to run. Right. So it provided a good twist. I agree. Yeah, and you know, I just it was like it was like it was such a big setback, and I thought the movie really really needed that and really needed. I mean, and and to the overall message, which we'll get into, which is that, you know, losing weight is only half the battle. 
Yeah, it's not going to fix all the all the problems yeah, issues. Um, although it seems like it will temporarily. Um, Definitely. So yeah, I just like I found Jillian Bell very engaging as Brittany. I thought she did a good job. I look forward to her seeing her in more things. Oh, I did want to say too on another note. Um, so you know, they there's some use of prosthetics and stuff in the beginning for her to lose weight, yeah. but. I I really one of the things that I really the most liked about this movie is that you are not like this was not, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow in a fat suit. No, and it wasn't it wasn't this biggest loser transformation. Right. It was a very real I I felt it was a very real transformation of someone losing a decent amount of weight but not she she was losing fifty pounds versus losing a hundred pounds, and so if I sorry I may have cut you off, but I I I, I think I agree with what you were about to say. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's the prosthetics are first of all not so obvious because they're they're minimally used. They they pad her out a little bit, but like I said, yeah, it's not this huge fat suit that she's in, and she doesn't, you know, there's. There's a line in the movie where she's like, I'm, I'm going to try to lose some weight. And you know, the roommate's like, oh, like down to 120 pounds? Oh, that and, character. <laughs> and then and she's like, I was thinking like 150. Like, Meanwhile, this yeah, her roommate's this stick skinny Asian woman who, remember, I can't, uh, there was, there's this line where they're playing a game and Jillian wants, she asks her roommate if she wants to come running with her, which I think was a good, nice yeah. gesture. And the roommate's like... Remember, I can't do too much cardio, or I guess, or else I'll get super skinny. I'm like, so she's one of those people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just, again, I felt like in another movie, it, it, it you know, it would have been some super skinny actress uh, returning to their actual look, and not an actress yeah. who has quite a normal body weight and a normal figure who was just padded out a bit. It was really refreshing. Yeah. To see that. And I think I think this point could be debated depending on your perspective of thinness. But I think even while she definitely loses weight and she's definitely thinner at the end, she's still not stick skinny. I think She's not Hollywood skinny. No, she's not. She's not Hollywood skinny. She's just not skinny. Hollywood skinny. She's definitely thin, but she's not Hollywood skinny. And I think depending on how you see different body types, that may change for your own individual yeah. perspective. But it's nice that she, yeah, she's still, they maintained her realness as an actual character and an actual regular human being. Right. Probably a good segue into yeah. body positivity. Yeah. So, so um, dealing with weight loss, the movie hit has hit some, hit some flack about the narrative of of weight loss being, you know, the the key to success and happiness and, you know, getting a partner. Um and so one article we read um really felt very negative felt like the movie undercut its own its own message of body positivity by constantly focusing on how much weight she was losing. Yeah. And I think yeah, and when we read, I think in the terms of the articles that I know that we both read, I think there were sort of two camps of, there was the first camp, which you just described of, it focused too much on her weight. And then there was the second camp of, is it really, like all body types should be accepted, but is it really so bad to also want to lose some weight? Yeah. And I do think that from my, in my own personal opinion, I think the movie definitely tried because they definitely, I think they definitely tried to make sure it was not all about weight. Because in the beginning, they talk about the doctor that she initially goes to said, oh, your BMI is quite high and that you should probably lose 40 to 50 pounds. But he also still mentions like, oh, there are people who are overweight, but they're healthy because maybe they have, I think, a thyroid issue or something <laughs> Yeah, our genetics. Like, he kind of, that got a little bit fumbled, but I did appreciate they made an effort to say, you you can you can sort of be healthy at any weight. And he was like, look, if you, you know, like, you also have high blood pressure and you also have a really yeah. high resting heart rate, which, you he know. He brings in things besides, besides weight that shows that she 
that indicates to him that she is also just unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. Quick backstory. Like, let's divine some terms and put yeah. a wrap around what we're talking about. I'm sure everybody's heard of body positivity. I was surprised to find out that body positivity and the quote unquote fat acceptance movement started in the 60s. Because it mm. feels like a much more recent phenomenon. But as with it all does. as with all things, like nobody ever invents <laughs> these ideas. They just they they surge and then they go dormant and they and they resurface. Especially with the internet. Yes. And so the, the you know, the current the current state and the difficulty of of the body positivity movement has you know, again, it was rooted in it, it's very much rooted in an intersectional look at bodies as well like you can't you you can and certainly people do try to have this conversation without discussing you know pe- people of color women of color and their bodies but like it's it was also really about like what kind of bodies are shown or accepted and it's not just thin it's white and thin and that you know it, read anything about Serena Williams, like to just talk about how black women's bodies are just not accepted and they're scrutinized, they're picked apart, that, you know, a white woman's body just doesn't face that. So one of the complaints about how the, how the movement has been sort of definitely co-opted by corporations, you know, Dove and whatnot, um, has been, a, it still defines the terms and it still kind of narrows it into like, okay, this is body positivity, but it's this is still what's acceptable. Like, yeah. and it isn't as all encompassing. Um, and there's been, there's, and then the, so the other camp of body positivity where a lot of the proponents want to go back to fat acceptance is, is also been, there is this weird tension between fat acceptance, loving your body for who, for what it is. And then the people who are like, but I still kind of want to lose weight. And where do those people fit in? in, in, Yeah, it reminds me sort of, is it third wave feminism? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I may may be wrong. Finish your thought and then I'll tell you. So (laughs) my my main thought is that I feel like in the general feminist movement, um, particularly with makeup, Mm. there was, and, and body hair, there was sort of the initial reaction of, Let's reject makeup. Let's reject body or reject the removal of body hair. Right. And there was because these have been ideals that have been ingrained to us at an early age. But then more recently, I feel like, you know, there are people who say, you know, yes, this has been women's appearance has definitely been ingrained to us. But I also like doing my makeup. I like putting you know, different color eyeshadows on my face. I like experimenting with different colors of lipstick. Like it's not for someone else. It's for me. Um, And similar with body hair, like I like the feel of smooth legs on, you know, and like rubbing them together or whatever it might be. Right. That it's for me, even if it's part of a general construct, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for someone else. And the weight loss, that part of the weight of the, body positivity movement reminds me of that same progression of, okay, let's like our bodies, how they are. Let's not, we don't need to do anything of them. And then there are people who are like, well, I kind of want to lose some weight. I kind of want to be fitter, but I'm doing it because I want it versus that society versus doing it because society wants it. Right. Um, and I'm not I, sure if that's third wave feminism or not. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yes. But and I. But I again, like I, I will link to this. There was a great call your girlfriend episode on body hair, um, and especially like you know some of the sort of least accepted um, facial hair on women, and, mm. and and a conversation about that. And again, like I think one of the frustrations and where this tension comes in to play a lot is is on the intersectional front where you have, for example, um, for a lot of black women, you know, because their hair is so curly, like they're just really prone to ingrown hairs and like, it's just easier and better for them. Some of them, I don't want to speak for all black women as a non-black woman to, you know, to not remove it because it just creates issues or certain ethnicities who just have, you know, like heavier arm hair. Yeah. Or more likely to grow a mustache. mustache or any of those things. And so, um, 
there's often pushback and, and, and tension when, you know, white women get to decide what the standards are and not acknowledging, um, even in feminism, like, um, and it's always, it's always good to sort of pull back and say, like, where did some of these ideas and movements come from? So, so I kind of, I, I, I kind of found the complaint about the movie really interesting because Yes, I didn't love the doctor scene, but one of the things I felt like everybody missed who made the complaint was so Brittany is very much focused on her weight and there's like scene after scene after scene of her like pulling out the scale and looking weighing at her body in, yeah. and weighing in and having like um, being horrified by her own, you know, like overweight body. Um, and what drives her to overwork herself so much is because she's not getting down to a specific yes, number. Yes, she hits a plateau. And, but there's a very, like, prominent scene at the end of the movie when she's worked on her emotional stuff where you see her just put the scale away. Yeah. And be like, I'm done. Maybe I'm not going to get to... And she never hits her goal weight. First of all, one, she doesn't actually hit her goal weight. She says it's 150. She gets down to about... 160, I think. 160, and then she just puts the scale away and says, I'm not going to focus on this. And I was like, I'm... Did no one else see that part of the movie? Like, yeah, she does decide ultimately it's not about weight. So I'm like, what? And that's kind of where I, uh, I fall. I think I fall similarly to you as well. And also, there's this big scene with one of Demetrius's friends at her at his birthday party. Right. Um, one of his friends, Jasmine, is an overweight woman or mm. looks to be overweight, and Brittany is has been drinking and. With a, with a thin male partner. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, so you have Jasmine and her, and her thin male partner enter the scene. Brittany having gone through, as you know, sort of basically gone through her physical transformation at this point in the movie. And she goes off on Jasmine about, like, you know, do you ever think about the fact that you're overweight i'm trying i can't remember the exact dialogue but sort of she just cuts her down in the middle yeah, of the party she's, and it's she's being very awkward. mean <laughs> it's rude as yeah, yeah it's bad. she's being very mean rude to jasmine about the fact that jasmine you know ap- appears to be overweight and and also with a thin partner she like questions his love for jasmine because he is thinner and she apologizes to her by sending her flowers and a note and included the note she's like i'm sorry You know, I really, it's really that I just, I wish I had what you had. And that, like you said earlier, the weight is not going to fix all of Brittany's problems. She also has to do some soul searching about being able to open up to people, her, you know, what her career goals are going after her career. And weight is a, the catalyst and a big, and sort of a big part of the journey, but it's not going to solve everything. Right. And, you know, the woman Jasmine gets her own little monologue in the movie to say, yeah. you know, of course I think about my weight. I think about my freaking weight every day, like as every, you know, like overweight woman does. And so, I, you know, one of the sort of early battles, and I wouldn't say that it's won, um, when there was this resurgence of the fat acceptance and body positivity movement was people constantly saying, you're going to normalize overweight people and that's just going to make everybody overweight. Yeah. And there's a zero evidence of that. And also zero evidence that shaming people about their weight makes anybody thinner, right? Like it doesn't work. And yet, um, so I, I will, I will admit that this, this topic, um, doesn't affect me personally. And I'm always just sort of, horrified when I hear these stories of how, you know, complete strangers will comment on people's weight in public or like, like what F they're you. eating. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, what is wrong? You know, it's just like, you know, I, I get it. There are terrible people everywhere. Um, I, 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 I like my capacity to continually be shocked that there are these people in the world. Like, I'm glad I'm not so jaded, but I'm always just appalled that, um, how much people feel comfortable to comment 
of yeah. people's weight when they're overweight or what they're eating or their choices. And there was another article that we read about a woman who was sort of heckled for her weight um, while running the New York City. So her name is Shante Sma- Snell, and she is um, a black woman, and she was heckled while freaking running the New York City Marathon, like while actually doing the thing. And like, you know, the movie the movie sort of talks about this, but like you have to qualify for the New York City Marathon. Like it's not yeah. that easy to get into. Um, and And so, you know, she became a hero of sorts, and you're like, who – what is going on? And I just... It's like, why do you have the energy to do this? this yes. <laughs> um, but I think, but I think, which the movie sort of subtly made the point, um, uh, another another good reference on this topic is um, This American Life did kind of two stories on body positivity. Oh, okay. And they did one where, it's amazing, where a woman actually gets to confront her troll. Oh, that's so um, cool. I believe it's Lindsay, Lindy West, rather. And, you know, they, they like, find her troll who was, like, telling her, you know, she was a fat B and, a, you know, is this, a fat Was she writing C. on a blog and he, it was someone yeah, who was always commenting? Yeah, she was a writer and she okay. was commenting and he would, you know, make these, all these, say all these terrible things about her and had the absolute courage. Like, I don't, I don't disagree with. I don't, you know, I don't want to say like, oh, he's a hero for coming forward, but like, gosh, darn it. Like, that's not an easy thing to do to admit it and like go in public and say, I was a horrible troll. Yeah. Right. Um, and what he says, very similar. That's all I could think of in that scene with Brittany um, confronting a, this overweight woman. What he says was like, I was fat and I felt terrible at myself and I was angry at you for finding peace and happiness when I could not like it definitely came from an a dark envious place was yeah. at the root of those comments um and people get very angry when the thing they think is holding them back doesn't hold somebody else back because then it means they could do it too right um and it's just you know it's like it's like you can be fat and healthy you can be fat and a marathon runner um one woman's story is like i don't know i ran a marathon and i didn't lose any weight and i was like okay fair like but yeah. she's super healthy and she will go to every doctor and they will tell her to lose weight like you know and and that's going to be her life um but i i i i thought i felt like the movie did a good job of of keeping all of that in perspective i agree like sort of i think what I was sort of trying to say at the beginning is I think regardless of whether where you come at with the movie and body positivity, I, I at the very least they tried to to make it well rounded, and I think they did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I did too. Um, it would have been nice if the other two people in her, her running friends also weren't like real thin, but fine. <laughs> um, I I I just I thought the movie. By I was just like all of those points of like by not having this like Hollywood skinny mo- woman playing the part where she gets down to that, by having her put the scale away, like all of those things, and by showing that losing weight is is only half the battle. But I mean, yeah. One thing I'll say, I guess in terms of a little devil's advocate, is that mm-hmm. um, the 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 rise of her getting better and starting to do more with her life is very I think is very intertwined with the weight loss in terms of that they're very much happening at the same time because I think even before the third act you know she starts talking about how she wants to go back into advertising that she wants to get her career on track that she wants to start dating again they are very much happening at the same time as and it gets to be happening more and more so as she gets closer and closer to her goal weight, even though she never reaches it. Um, I think there is a case to be made where sort of subliminally you are seeing her transformation mentally very much in parallel with the physical part of it. Mm -hmm. And I definitely see that. I think, I think in a realistic sense, it does make sense that, I can I can see that these things in real life would become parallel with each other, but I do see the point of there is a message that it sends out of, you know, maybe you can start to get your life together only after you start losing weight. 
Uh, yeah, I hear you. And I, I think what's the problem is, and, and, and this is, so we do live in this world, right? So we do the, the, you know, the body positivity movement has certainly not won all its battles. And so, you know, she talks about, and I thought I, I liked this scene as well, because this is something that you, you know, all these issues have been discussed ad nauseum. And, and there's a scene where she's talking to Jaren about what it was like being an overweight woman. And she's saying, like, men just don't even think of me as a woman. She's like, yeah, the stagehands talk, you know, about other women and, and rip them apart, like in front of me as if I don't care, or I don't matter. And I thought that's, that's a nice example of of, of w- the ways you get treated differently that has isn't been discussed a million times, right? Um, yeah, and they even show how the difference in, like in the beginning when she's running for the subway, the door always closes in front of her, but then at a certain point after she's, you know, thinner and closer to her goal weight, finally some guy does actually hold the door, hold the door for her. Right. And I think that's the problem. Like we all still live in this world. Like yeah. she is still, she is a hundred percent going to get treated differently. I mean, that's what the body positivity issue movement is taking issue with. That There's an extreme amount of discrimination against overweight people, like facts, like hard facts yeah. in the, in the workplace, like less likely to be promoted, less, you know, less likely to be hired. Um, and I think pretending that her life wasn't going to get easier in certain ways after she lost the weight would have been disingenuous because it was going to get better. And, you know, it is just easier to move through the world the more sort of attractive you are. Yeah, and I, I agree. Um, yeah, I go, I, whenever I watch movies, even about other stuff, I always go back and forth on, you know, yes, this is real. And theoretically, the, whatever movie I'm watching is trying to portray real life in its actuality, but then also versus the message that it sends out. And like, mm-hmm. you know, at what point do we, at what point should movies or whatever push forward to create a new narrative to the point yeah. that it may start being disingenuous? I think it depends on every movie and it depends on the context. Absolutely. Um, and and yeah, I mean, so another article I read was from a woman who was like, yes, I'm totally into the, you know, fat acceptance is great, but I would like to be thinner. <laughs> like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, you know, as the sort of cliche goes, it doesn't mean I have to turn in my feminism card. Like, no, yeah. it, it doesn't. Yeah. A lot of the articles I felt like we read talked about how, yeah, if you want, if you want to, if you do want to sort of better yourself, not better yourself, if you do want to lose, um, some pounds like talking about it you're worried about turning in your feminist card (laughs) right but i think but i appreciated the one thing that was great and that i love that was in all the articles and you know it's frequent you know i'm an advice calm junkie it was one of them was like just don't talk about it nobody wants to hear about your diet (laughs) nobody wants to hear about your weight loss no one wants to see you count calories like all we can all agree whatever you body positivity losing weight whatever it is you want to do just shut up (laughs) <laughs> like food talk is just so annoying and yeah and tr- and and you know can be actively damaging like can be very triggering for people with you know eating disorders like there's there's times when um you know if you are on the thinner side and you make a comment oh i shouldn't eat this like that can be hard for people who have struggled with eating disorders too so it's like just don't talk about it <laughs> like go quietly lose weight on your own and you know, we don't need to know. Although I will say, I do agree generally, but I think um, I think it can be very helpful if someone is trying to lose weight to have some semblance of community. Because it can be very daunting, sort of like how the movie shows. It can be very daunting to get started on the process of losing weight and going to the gym, especially if you're a bigger person. And um, I think it can be very helpful to get helpful advice about, oh, I've made these substitutions and it's worked out well. And it's like, oh, maybe that's something that I could try. Um, Like maybe I could try this. And if it doesn't work for me, it doesn't work. I think it's finding if you are trying to lose weight or eat healthier, I think it could be just make sure to find people who maybe are going along with it with you. 
And that way you're talking about it with people who care oh, and you can yeah. swap tips. Yeah, find a community. Ne- versus never talking about it at all. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. Yes, you're completely right. I didn't mean to say never talking about it at all. But I remember there was, I want to say it was a Carolyn Hacks. But there's this woman who wrote in and she was like, I sit at the desk where the donuts get put out. Oh, God. And she like made this comment that like oh. every single person who picks up a freaking donut has to say something about it. Like, oh, it's well, funny. I had a salad for lunch. Or like, <laughs> oh, I was good yesterday. It's like, oh, I probably don't need this. And she's like, take a freaking donut. But like yeah. no one, everybody feels like sort of watched and by her and therefore judged. And she's like, just take a donut and walk away. Like why? And she, and, and she was like male, female, like it didn't matter. Like everyone had to do this little dance around wanting a freaking donut. And um, you're right. It, it comes down to the same battle over body hair and over makeup. Like, please don't shame people who want to lose, who actually do want to lose weight. Um, but don't have- assume that, Everyone who's heavier right. is unhealthy or wants to lose right. weight. There's room for all kinds yeah. in feminism and yeah. in the world. Yeah. And everyone has their own individual situation, individual contexts to their own lives. Yeah. So I think that kind of wraps it up. And now we've had this really good discussion and I am not sure where I want to go with a social impact score from one to 10. Um, I think, I think I'm going to go high. I, I don't think a lot of people are going to see this movie, unfortunately. So that definitely sort of depresses it in terms of the ability to have a social impact. But at the same time, um, I also say the movie really was great on the diversity. And yeah, one of her one of her running friends, um, who's like running to like prove he can do it to his kids, um, is gay, and it's just like. It's there. It doesn't need to be addressed in the context of the film. It's just there. And it's like, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Best friend and the boyfriend are both Asian. Like, yeah. Step, well, I guess, brother-in-law is black. You know, like, it's never, dra- it's just like, if this is New York City and there are people of color around. And yeah. it, it, it definitely felt like, um, so, it's, it, again, it's nice to see it just integrated. Um, so I'm going to give, I want to, I want to give this movie a six. If I thought it was more popular, I might even go higher. Um, I, I do think it really brings up a lot of, it, it already brought up a lot of great discussions about body positivity, what it all means, what's the context of being an overweight athlete or not having this, this stereotypical, you know, wiry thin marathoner body. Um, so I, I think it's putting a lot of good out in the world. Yeah, I was thinking of going a six or a seven. Um, I'll go seven just to be different. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we like, that kind of hard-hitting controversy <laughs> here at Movies That Matter. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, six or seven, generally. Because yeah. I, I, I also agree that, because at least by us, this movie was only playing in sort of the more indie theater. I don't think it, at least it hasn't yet made it to the AMCs or the Regals or the whatever major theater you have by you. But yeah, I've, unfortunately, I wish it would get more reach, but I don't know if it will. Yeah. Do you have a recommendation for the week? So I think I think my, to go along with the body positivity theme, I'll recommend a content creator that I really like. Her name is Jasmine Robbins. She, I think, is still with BuzzFeed. Okay. And she works mainly on the channel that is called As Slash Is. But I think I think she's still with BuzzFeed, but she does a lot of I think she'll get her own advertising jobs or or not advertising. I think she'll get her own modeling jobs outside of BuzzFeed. And she may you know, guest stars on different podcasts that I've listened to. And she is someone who I think is very much up and coming, if not already a firm person in the modern uh body positivity movement she's also mixed race and a lesbian so that's cool too awesome so we hope you enjoyed this episode of movies that matter if you did find us and tell us if you didn't keep it to yourself troll (laughs) just kidding uh we have facebook page movies matter pod we have a twitter handle at movies matter pod um come and find us join the conversation and remember 
movies matter. And so do you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>